Hi everyone, in this video we're going to start talking about degrees finally. So we've been working in radians and most people are more familiar with degrees and we'll actually get to mess around and see how the two compare. Uh, and one big goal in this video is to be able to convert back and forth between degrees and radians without too much trouble. So I think that a great place to start with degrees is the same place we started with radians. If we rotate all the way around, so our terminal side lands back on that positive x-axis, that's a 360 degree angle. So if a full rotation is 360 degrees, we can start to basically just take fractions of that to figure out, for example, that halfway around the circle is half of 360 degrees, which is going to be 180 degrees. So again, remember that what I'm really labeling is the angle, the rotation, but so this doesn't get crazy messy and hard to read, I'm just gonna mark the direction that that would point. So 180 degrees would point directly out the negative x-axis. And we could cut that in half again to figure out uh, what angle would get us to point straight up the y-axis, and that would be a 90 degree angle, otherwise known as a right angle, which will be a big one when we're talking about triangles, which will be coming up shortly in this section. Uh, and we can continue as much as we'd like to. If we cut that in half, we get our 45 degree angle right down the middle of quadrant one. Uh, the others that we usually look at are dividing that by three. So if we cut it up into thirds, let's say that's one third and two thirds of 90. One third of 90 is 30 degrees and two thirds of 90 is 60 degrees. It might be a little to the top. And we can continue counting around in this fashion. So um, it's interesting to know what 90 plus 30 is. That would be 120. That's a nice one. 90 plus 45 is 135. Uh, 90 plus 60 is a 150. We can do this around the entire circle. Okay, so we want to snag this one. Half a rotation is 180 degrees. And we're going to use it to build up our unit conversion. You could really use any. This one just works out nicely. You don't end up having to reduce or do any arithmetic with it. So if half a rotation is 180 degrees, then we could say 180 degrees is the same rotation as pi radians. We know that pi radians will put us in this exact same direction. And if 180 degrees is equal to pi, then if we take 180 degrees and divide it by pi, that's taking a number and dividing it by itself. There are units involved, which is why this number doesn't look the same, but that's taking two equal quantities and dividing them by each other. So that should automatically give you one. If two things are equal, then when you divide one by the other, you should get one. And the same should be true if we take pi over 180 degrees which means we've just built a fraction we can use for converting units. If you multiply something by one, it doesn't change the value, but we've very, uh, very cleverly written one in two different ways that uh, introduce or remove units without changing the value of the angle that we're looking at. So these are gonna be really nice. So this, let's just say this, we can use these as fraction conversion, or unit conversion fractions. Okay, so let's go ahead and try a couple. The first one I have for you is taking an angle in degrees and converting it to radians. So just real quick, if I was trying to picture 200 degrees, I would say I know that 180 degrees is halfway around the circle. And this is a very little bit further than that. 30 degrees would put us about a third of the way through the quadrant. And we're a little short of that. So 200 degrees is somewhere down here in quadrant two, which means we're expecting a little bigger than pi radians. So to do the conversion, I would take my 200 degrees and I would say, I wanna multiply by one, I get my pick of fractions. My goal is to get rid of degrees. So I'm gonna use the second fraction, pi over 180 degrees. What will happen here 
is since we have degrees, and you can put this over one if you want, in the top and the bottom, that will cancel out completely. Uh, when you have a nice uh, 200 degrees multiplied pi by pi over 180 exact answer, I would say it might be good to keep an exact answer, especially since this reduces really nicely. So I'm just going to keep the pi, but I want to be really clear that pi uh, is not a unit. It's not the units of radians. Radians don't have units. That's one of the things that's so powerful about them. Uh, one radian is the rotation required to put the radius around the outside of the circle once. So it's a count. How many times does the radius fit around the outside of the circle? And when you're counting things, that's not. there's no units. The number of times is one. That's just one. Okay, so we have the pi just hanging out so that we don't end up with an approximate answer. And then I'm just going to do a little canceling. Um, I can fairly easily divide top and bottom by 10, cancel out a 10. And then I can also divide top and bottom by 2, which is going to leave me 10 pi over 9. Okay, so again, the pi is nice when we're working with radians because we know that 9 pi over 9 would be right here and 10 pi over 9 is just a little further. That's great. The exact answer is really nice. Just make sure you're not thinking about radians as having pi as their unit. That's not true. Pi is a number, 3.14-ish. Okay, let's go the other direction. We can convert from radians to degrees as well. So if we're starting with 7 pi over 9 radians and we want to convert to degrees, this time we're not canceling units because radians are unitless. There are no radians here. Uh, we are trying to introduce degrees into this. So we want those to end up on the top. Let's use this fraction. 180 degrees divided by pi is equal to 1. So by multiplying by 1, we change the units of this angle, 7 pi over 9, without actually changing the size of the angle, which is really key. So the pi's cancel, which again is convenient, but make sure you're not thinking about that as, oh, the, the radians cancel. That's not true. Uh, that's just part of this number here. Radians are unitless. And then we've introduced the degrees, which is great. I'm going to cancel a 9 out. 9 should go into 180 20 times. So I'm seeing that all I'm left with is 7 times 20, which is 140 degrees. So 7 pi over 9 radians, which is a little less than halfway around the circle. 9 pi over 9 would be halfway around is equivalent to 140 degrees, which is also a little less than halfway around the circle. 180, 180 degrees would be halfway around. It's extremely important that you write this degrees in for me. That's the only way I know that you've ended up with degrees as your units as opposed to radians. So make sure you're really careful about that. Okay, so that's both directions. The last thing I want to mention here is just to go back to that Radians are unitless. Pi is not a unit when we're working with radians. So if I ask you to take five radians and convert to degrees, it's very much like the last question I asked. Five radians is somewhere in quadrant four, so I'm not starting with the same angle, but it takes the same exact steps. I need to multiply by 180 over pi. Uh, I'm trying to introduce degrees, and there are no units in the first place, so I don't need to cancel anything. So I get, what, 1,800, 900 uh, degree, 900 over pi degrees. And that's your exact answer when we get a uh, not quite so nice radian value. Sometimes I'll ask you to go ahead and look at a decimal so you can just get an idea. 900 over pi should be around 300, since it's roughly 900 over 3. So this is approximately 286.48 degrees. And if in doubt, you can show me both. If you're not sure, you can always ask me. It's never a bad idea to have an exact answer. Uh, and I will prompt you if I really specifically want to see the approximate answer. So I'd rather have this one if I'm only getting one. All right, that's our intro to degrees. So play around on your homework. Hopefully you're somewhat familiar with degrees, and that should get you even more so. Thanks for watching.